Now I want to talk about P ways, and this is located on page 40 of your workbook. So P waves, as we discussed much earlier on in this lesson, represent atrial depolarization. So that's um, a wave of depolarization across both atria. And P waves are normally upright in leads one, two, and three, and uh, they're typically contoured or rounded. Uh, but normal P waves may also be notched or biphasic and still represent a sinus rhythm. The question you have to ask yourself is, all, are all the P waves the same shape, and is the rhythm regular? If all the P waves are the same shape, whether they're contoured or notched or biphasic, uh, then they represent, and, and the rhythm is regular, then they represent a sinus rhythm. So let me give you an example. So here, here is an example of a, um, a notched uh, P wave, and here's an example of a biphasic P wave. And most often we see this kind of change in P wave morphology as a result of enlargement of um, the left atrium. We see this uh, typically in chronic left-sided congestive heart failure or mitral valve regurgitation in which uh, the left atria has to work a little harder over a long period of time and that muscle becomes larger and so consequently there's um, you know more um, sort of waves or energy flowing through that left atria and, and it alters the, the P wave morphology. So if you saw notched P waves consistently preceding each QRS and the rhythm was regular, this would still be a sinus rhythm. So here's an example. So here we have uh, notched P waves preceding each QRS and they're all identical. The rhythm is regular, so the, the P wave morphology is unchanged. When you see this, it represents a sinus rhythm and it just simply means there's probably um, underlying atrial hypertrophy. On the other hand, if all the underlying P waves were normal, like this, and this one here, and then suddenly we see this uh, biphasic P wave or notched P wave, um, look at where that QRS falls in, in the sequence of things. Here we can see that the, the QRSs are equidistant except for this one. Uh, this one happens earlier than expected, the P wave morphology is different from the underlying P waves. This represents a premature atrial complex. So in this case, if it's a single notch P wave, uh, it represents an ectopic focus like we see here. Here's some other examples of P waves. Um, some refer to these as junctional P waves. The AV junction is where the AV node connects to the bundle of Hiss. And um, electrophysiologists are not really crazy about the term junctional because when you go in and map the heart uh, and determine the location of the focus, oftentimes it's not exactly at the AV junction. It may be six millimeters southeast of the AV junction, but you know, from a paramedic perspective or uh, an emergency medicine perspective, we still often use this term junctional. So if um, you see inverted P waves with a short PR interval, this would suggest uh, a junctional rhythm. This would be an example of that. If you saw uh, absent P waves followed by a narrow QRS complex or simply a narrow QRS complex rhythm with, with no discernible P waves, that would also be a junctional rhythm. But the key here is that the QRS has to be narrow. If you don't see any P waves at all, and the QRS is wide, then we have to assume that the QRS is wide because the impulse is originating from the ventricles. And I'll talk about that a little bit more later. Uh, retrograde P waves is not something uh, you see very often. I certainly ha ha have never seen it, quite frankly. But if the ectopic focus is lower down still, uh, we see a QRS followed by a retrograde P wave that uh, we'll sometimes see in a junctional rhythm. <clears throat> 